Hey everybody, Nate Tice here from The Athletic Football Show, back again with another edition of Wind the Clock, and back again with another edition of Wind the Clock, breaking down this Detroit Lions offense, because they just keep doing good stuff. Going to be looking at the run game that Ben Johnson and this coaching staff really cook up with their strong offensive line and a pair of really strong running backs, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. So going to be looking at a tight end motion, how they tie it all together, how they throw different pitches at defenses. This Chargers team had a little issue with some of these pitches that this Lions team showed at them. So let's see exactly what Detroit got up to and how they put up these yards and points. So the first run concept that we're going to look at is an outside zone variant called Zorro, which I'm sure producer Kent's going to have a lot of fun with. What? N? What does N stand for? No, no, it's a Z. I am Zorro. But also, it's a run play that is very popular throughout the NFL, especially new twists that teams are adding. It's a Shanahan run concept, or at least they're the primary users of it. And so as more Shanahan coaches have gone around the league, more teams have thus used this type of run. Now, the other variation that these teams have started to use is using an escort motion or a speed motion at the snap of the ball, generally a tight end, but getting him on the move at the snap of the ball to create new angles and get him some momentum. Maybe if there's tougher blocks, if he has to kick out or just to provide a little more oomph uh, at the point of contact on the defender. That is the motion, that escort motion that you're gonna see the lines use over and over in these clips. That is the, the crux of this video, of this wind the clock. One thing you'll notice a lot of these lines plays is how they start in a spread formation before shifting back inside and creating a tighter bunch formation. So you can see Sam Laporta starting outside and then shifting back in. The lines are in 13 personnel, which is a tight end here and the two tight ends here. Brock Wright right here is gonna be highlighted several times in this video. And at the snap of the ball, you see Jared Goff give the motion. You see Wright motioning across. You see the toss outside zone, and you see a nice game from the line. So now we'll look at this play from the end zone view. So after the shift happens, you're gonna see Brock Wright going motion here. He's gonna help Laporta on this block on Joey Bosa. So Laporta is gonna be blocking outside. He's gonna be aiming for the outside shoulder, the outside cloth. Brock Wright will go in motion and then block the inside of Joey Bosa. So rather than have Laporta, who can be an iffy blocker, really any iffy tight end blocker, you're going to give him help and create a double team where it doesn't look like an obvious double team at the snap of the ball. That tight end's not lined up right here and trying to block and thus let Bosa kind of react to that play. So looking at the blocking from the offensive line, getting onto this, this is outside zone. This is an outside zone variation. Outside zone is going to go towards the tight end that's on the ball. Even though there's 13 here, this is to the tight end. Technically, you're running the other side, but it doesn't matter. So you'll have Decker cut off right here. You'll have the double team, center and left guard, double team here. He's gonna help out right here. St. Brown goes to the safety, and then he kind of has a nice little fun block, kind of just gets to hang out on the backside. So we will see this. This is gonna be a toss outside zone play, and that's just gonna help create some more angles for David Montgomery to hit. There's the run play. You see all the double teams happening. Nice cut off here, double team, double team, and then here comes right on his double team right there. And you got a nice gain first down and a nice gain for the Lions. So let's get to the next play. So a little bit later here again, Lions starting in 12 personnel this time. So you have tight end here, tight end here, receiver here, receiver here, running back here. The Lions like to do this sometimes to maybe get their Amon around say Brown or another receiver on maybe an advantageous matchup against one of the linebackers. But they show that before, again, shifting into a tight formation. And this could have been a game plan thing from the Lions where, hey, we're going to show spread. If you you as a defense, the Chargers, show a too high defense like that, we will check then into a run play to get a nice look, nice soft box that we can attack. And it looks like, <laughs> looks like the plan worked for the Lions offense. So again, this is going to be, if you can guess it, we'll have a little speed motion here to help out a double team and we're going to get another outside zone Zorro play. So again, there's the motion at the snap of the ball. This time it's Laporta and he's going to help out Brock Wright and away they go to create a huge gain because Jameer Gibbs has a lot of juice and he creates a lot of yards here. Almost scores, but they decide it's not touching. So again, shifting back in the Chargers on both of these plays. The first play was 13 personnel, which is three tight ends. This one's two tight ends. The Chargers match with base personnel, meaning one, two, three defense alignment, and then four linebacker types. Technically, these are edge players, outside linebackers, but that's a three, four. They're in base defense. Four DBs is the most important part of that. Not really the front seven configuration. So 
Looking at this play, we'll have a block here, a block here, going up to there, a block here, going up to there. He's going to block, aim outside. The port is going to come across. He'll block right there. And there we go. And we'll see that how this gets off to the races. Snap of the ball, another toss play. This time to Gibbs, who's got a little more juice. He had a little, little, little issue catching the ball there, but he got it. He ended up getting it. He secured it. We're good. Snap of the ball. You see the double teams happening. Double team, double team, tight end, double team. About to work on the outside. And Gibbs, with all the juice in the world, hits the hole, winds it all the way back. Safeties are not involved in the play. And it's a big gain, again, for the Lions on a Zorro concept. Going to the right again. Now, showing the first changeup that the Lions went to off of this play. So they just hit him with two fastballs. Okay, we got two strikes on us, so we got to make sure we gear up. We'll choke up on the bat a little bit. We'll shift our feet. This is what the Chargers defense tried to do. So we'll look at this third clip and see exactly how the Lions, in a classic, I know what you know what I know what you know move, and then they then know what I'm about to do. That makes sense? Makes sense to me. That doesn't make sense. So when the Lions come out again in 12 personnel with two tight ends, the Chargers again match with big bodies. They only have four DBs on the field, two, three, four. But this time their front is not like a traditional three, four. They did a six, one front, which is that they have one, two, three, four defensive lineman types. That's Khalil Mack. That's another outside linebacker right there. And then one off ball linebacker. Six bodies up front, one off the ball. And this is to stop outside zone plays. This is exactly what Vic Fangio did in 2018 to slow down the high flying Rams offense. This is what Bill Belichick leaned to in the Super Bowl to slow down that same offense. So it's a common NFL answer. Brandon Staley, the head coach of the Chargers, is famously a Vic Fangio disciple. This is a common countermeasure if you're getting hit with outside zone in this type of defense. So we found our countermeasure. You're going to try that outside zone play again. We're going to stop it. Ben Johnson and the Lions, though, they they kind of knew this. They kind of were aware of this. So here it comes. There's that motion. Rock right again. Going on motion one more time. But this time, if you notice, there's no tight end right here in line. Sam Laporte is over here on the outside of the receiver. And that snap ball, you'll see exactly why. They toss it again. But if you notice, there's Penny Sewell with Brock Wright working all the way outside. There is Laporta and a receiver blocking one defensive end on the same side. They are working outside. They are pinning and pulling, which is a countermeasure to the countermeasure that the Chargers try to use. So this play, again, goes for a nice gain. And we're going to look at it from the end zone view because it's the run game. And that's what you want to watch the run game from. You want to watch it from the end zone view. That's football right there. <laughs> if you're watching X's and O's and all 22, watch the end zone view. It's a lot more fun for the run game. So we'll see this motion from Brock Wright, and you can see the angles created. If this were zone, there weren't a lot of double teams. Remember all those double teams I was pointing out in the first couple snaps? This is a way to take away the double teams. Sewell would have to hang here. We have a solo block, a single block right here. Okay, this is a double team right there, but it's only one getting to here. So who has this guy and who, he just has, uh, Penny Sewell just have a single team there. It's just, you can make it work, but it's not as advantageous for the offense. So again, this is why you wanna have the counters, the change-ups. So you can see, here's the pin from Jameson Williams and the Porta. And here's the ball going outside with Brock Wright and Penny Sewell, who's a perennial all-pro candidate probably for the rest of his career. So now you get these guys out in space and you can see Sewell's movement ability right here. That's 330, 340 pounds adjusting and making a great block down the field on Kenneth Murray. So again, I just, let's highlight, let's highlight Sewell one more time, okay? Just make sure everyone has eyes on there. We're going to adjust with those eyes and get inside. Gibbs is on the safety. You always want run plays on the safety. Brock Wright gets to block out a corner. That's always an advantage, a tight end blocking a corner. And now you got Gibbs on the safety, which should be a win. And it is as safety has a rough rep. He had a rough day. And another big game for the Lions. Okay, now the last one. I know there's some really fun ones here, but this is the last one. And this was really cool because it goes, this shows the usefulness of Amon Ross St. Brown and the creativity of this offense is that they will go to St. Brown on design runs in key situations, sometimes in short yards. They hit one earlier on a fourth and one to him on a design run play, but just in the flow of the offense. So this whole game, again, remember the spread formation. They're starting out before shifting back into a tight formation. And similar formations we've seen, right? Condensed, tight, stacked formations on either side. So, okay, maybe a similar look. 
But here is the counter, the literal counter to the main play that they've shown. So another changeup, but this is a counter run play to Amon Ross St. Brown, who's lined up right here. This is true wing back, uh, flex bone type offense stuff right here. So at the snap of the ball, I want you once again, notice the motion by the tight end, this time Laporta. There's the escort motion. And then here is the counter happening to the other side. This play goes for a decent gain. And I'll show you the end zone view to show you the flow of this Chargers linebackers with the motion after they got set up all game, all game, all game. It's him with the counter punch, the literal counter punch on a counter run. So it's a GT counter, meaning guard tackle counter. These two will pull and St. Brown is going to fall. But remember, motion here and also focus on watch what the linebackers do with this motion. This is a great counter because of how much they're anticipating what's about to happen. Motion goes. Look at those linebackers. See them all moving. They're all they're all ready. They think they got it. Watch them move at the snap of the ball. And then here comes the garden tackle pulling the opposite side. Here comes the ha handoff to St. Brown. And you have a decent gain because St. Brown, nice little body control, gets about nine yards there. Really nice play, but again, look at Penny Soul moving. It's fantastic. And watch the right guard capture this edge. Two of the huge blocks here, but make sure you watch Sewell on the move. It's, it's, it's one of the most fun things to watch in football right now. So let's get going. Boom, boom. Sewell keeps moving. St. Brown. Nice game. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this week's Wind the Clock. The Lions keep putting out great stuff. It's just been a pleasure to break down their, their game plans every single week, what Ben Johnson, Dan Campbell, and that whole staff are doing. They keep winning games. They keep putting up points, and I'll keep breaking them down. It's just how it goes. Please make sure to like this video. That means a lot to me. Also, make sure to subscribe to the Athletic Football Show YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next time.